Okay, let's review some uh, common problems from chapter three. Um, as we go through here, I will be referencing from time to time uh, worksheets. These are the Excel worksheets that are available with the course. And um, you should uh, review the content, review how those are created and what they ask for so you can understand how the problems are ultimately solved. So here we have an example where a company is offering a rebate. Uh, and obviously will lower the price, which lowers the profit of the company. However, by lowering the price, it's possible that we would increase the number of units we could sell. So the question in the end is, by, by offering this particular rebate, do we think that we would increase the overall uh, benefit to the company? Right? So if, if, the change in, uh, uh, if the change in sales is, only, is the only consequence, right? if this is the only thing that happens, we change the price and the sales change, then is this a good idea to do or not? That's ultimately the question. And this is a very simple kind of a cost-benefit analysis question. Now, as you see down below here, the benefit that we receive is there's an extra 50,000 units sold. And the uh, rebate, uh, the, the uh, profit margin when we talk about this rebate, is that the profit margin was now $600 per unit. So we would increase our benefits by $30 million. However, we also have a cost, right? The 150,000 units we have, the cost that we would have then is $200, right? That's this $200 rebate here. So that first 150,000 units, we're going to lose $200 per unit that we sell. So the net cost, again, is $30 million. So in this situation, the rebate of $200 would create a net wash. So there's no benefit to the company of this $200 rebate. So what are their choices? Well, if they reduced it to, one, uh, to $250, what would that do to the cost? We would assume, of course, that that would increase the number of units that could be sold. So in this case, it is a net wash and wouldn't help the company by moving uh, to this new uh, pricing mechanism, if you will. Next, we have a situation where a company has to decide how are they going to acquire um, some palladium. So they have some gold and uh, they're able to trade 10 ounces of gold for 20 ounces of palladium. So we need to understand the cost benefits of this particular type of a transaction. So the current market price of palladium is $987 per ounce. Well, we're going to receive 20 ounces. So the value of that is $19,740. What is the value of the gold that we're going to be giving up? The gold, we're going to give up 10 ounces of gold at $1,321 an ounce. That's the $13,210. So what is the benefit to the company? Is this a good idea? Well, you're going to receive $19,000 worth of product and you're going to give up $13,000 worth of product. So in the end here, this is a net gain to the company of $6,530. Problem three. There are three projects that we're thinking about, right? The cash flows are listed below. There are only one year projects, but we know here that the all cash flows are certain. And the risk-free interest rate on these projects is 12%. So the first question is, what is the net present value of each project? So we can use the capital budgeting technique 
uh, spreadsheet. Again, you type in the investment of negative $9, the cash flow in year one of $15, and plug in 12% as the um, discount rate. And we see down below here that Project A has a net present value of $4.39. B is $4.93. And C is $1.79. So if we're just using this capital budgeting technique process, we can answer these questions. If you can choose only one of these projects, which one would you choose? You choose the one that has the highest net present value. The reason for this is net present value measures the change in wealth of the company. So the maximum net present value will give you a maximum change in wealth. If you could choose any two of these projects, which should you choose? Again, we should choose A and B because, again, they have the highest net present value. It turns out that all three of these projects are good projects. We te Technically, we should want to do all three of these projects. <clears throat> Another way to solve this problem, since it's a one-year cash flow, you, you could use the time value of money worksheet find the present value in project A, find the present value of $15 one year from now at 12%. Turns out that's $13.39. Subtract the investment of $9, $13.39 minus nine gives us that $4.39. So we could use either technique with this it just turns out that uh, with a one-year cash flow, it's maybe a little bit time. Uh, uh, I don't think it takes any more time to do one over the other. It's just a different uh, trying to express the concept of which projects we should do. So problem four here says, what's the current price of a 30-year United States government bond with a zero coupon? if the risk-free rate's 3.12%. Again, most United States Treasury bonds are sold with a principal value of $1,000. So what can we do first? Well, let's answer the first question. What is the value of this zero coupon bond? If you use the time value of money spreadsheet, okay, and we know that the present, uh, the you want to find the present value of this $1,000 30 years from now. The value of that is $397.84. So if you were just buying the zero coupon, the, the actual uh, um, yeah, zero coupon bond, then the most you'd be willing to pay is $397.84. If this bond also has a coupon though, so there's two parts. This is really a full bond, but we're looking at both cash flows. If the bond pays an annual 6% coupon, what's the value of the coupon? So now we have to find the value of this 6%, 6% of $1,000, but this is now an annuity. So you have to look under the present value of an annuity a worksheet if you want to know how to do this we find out that the present value of this is one thousand one hundred and fifty seven dollars and some pennies so the total value of this bond is one thousand five hundred and fifty five dollars and eighty three cents it should be a period okay now you also could say if if you could just buy the coupon or the the uh, principal part you want to buy the zero coupon bond if you were asked to pay five hundred dollars for this well we now know that you wouldn't pay five hundred dollars because it's only worth three hundred ninety seven dollars and eighty four cents 
But if you use the time value of money uh, spreadsheet, if you plug in a present value of uh, negative five hundred dollars, the future value of the coupon of the bond is of the zero coupon bond is a thousand with thirty years. You would find out that the yield to maturity or the interest rate on this investment would be 2.34%. And since the risk-free rate is 3.12, you would not pay $500 because you wouldn't be getting a high enough uh, return on your investment. So next, a company is considering replacing a piece of machinery and the current cost is 10,500. This cost is estimated to rise by 6% by 2019. If the inflation rate is 2.5%, what is the cost of delay in the terms of dollars? So the future cost of this machine, right, is $11,130. Using the time value money spreadsheet, the current cost, you would input present value, negative 10,000, or 10,500,000. $10, you would use a cost of interest rate of 6% and equal to one. And you would find that its future value is 11,130. <clears throat> now, what is the present value of that at two and a half percent inflation rate? So the present value of this is 10,858 and some dollars. So what is the increase in cost by delaying this? Well, the present value of that new cost is 10.8 million, and you could currently buy it at 10.5 million. So by delaying this for one year, essentially it's gonna cost the company $358,000 in value to the firm. So again, if, um, if they could purchase it today, they would be better off purchasing it today than delaying it for one year. So next, <clears throat> our company currently has 250,000 in cash to invest. The uh, assets that we can buy are on the, pre on the next slide. The assets are risk-free and have a risk-free rate of 3.21%. And any extra cash that the company has, they can reinvest this for eight and a half percent. So let's look at the projects. There are three projects. Project A costs 15,000 and we would get 20,000 in one year. B is 30,000 cost, we get 50,000. And C, we'd pay 40,000 today and get 60,000 in one year. So what is the net present value for each project? Again, we can use the capital budgeting technique spreadsheet. And for this spreadsheet, we would use the risk-free rate as the discount rate, which is 3.21%. And you would find, as you see here below, the net present values for these three projects. And you can see that they are all positive projects. So we want to do all of them. Now, if we only wanted to do the best one, you might recognize here that the one with the highest net present value is the best of those three projects or project B. So how much cash will the company have today if they invested in these projects? Well, they have $250,000 in cash and they're also, they're gonna spend some of the cash and get the benefits. So the total value of this project or of the company today, cash and projects, is $290,954. After they make the investment, how much money will be left over? Well, they start with 250. As you can see, the investments up here is what they have to spend. So ultimately, they would end up with an extra $165,000 in cash after buying the projects. What about the cash at the end of the year? How much will be there? Well, 
here's the cash from the three projects, but we also have to include the investment in cash that we have left over, the remainder. And that's this formula here, 165,000 times one plus the growth rate for the year. So at the end of the year, we would have $309,125 in cash at the end of the year. So what is the present value of that cash? The present value of 309 at the risk-free rate of 3.21 is $299, uh, $299,515. So we have $299,000 left, uh, left at the end of the year. We start off with net $165,000. So the net increase in benefit or cash flow in today's dollars is $134,510. <clears throat> so next we have an example of three different projects. We have $100,000 to invest. We could invest $100,000 in T-bills. They pay 2.12%. We can invest 75,000 and get 85,000. We can invest 50,000 and get 60,000. So which process, which investment should we make? Well, if you go through the uh, examples here, what is the net present value of each option? The present net present value of the first project is zero. The net present value of the second project, 8,235. Uh, 8, and for the third project, the net present value is 8,754. Again, you solve this using the net present value uh, calculation from the capital budgeting techniques worksheet. So since project three has the highest net present value, that's the one we want to do. So the cash flow in year one, we get 60,000. Plus we also have the 50, uh, the other 50,000 that we didn't invest. We're going to earn 2.12% on that. So the cash flow in the final year is $111,060. So the net present value of project three, again, is 111,060 divided by 1.02, right? That's the net present value of that project, minus 100. And again, this ultimately gives us then our net present value, again, of $8,754. So it doesn't matter whether you are, um, which way you solve these problems, the net present value that you get in the end is ultimately the same. The calculations create or ultimately uh, result in the same answer. So now we have a security of uh, the pays an owner $12,000 in three years with no risk. The risk-free rate of interest is 3.5%. What is the no arbitrage price? In this example, we're going to use the time value of money spreadsheet. And that's going to tell us that the current value should be $10,823. So it's worth $10,823. And you're told you could buy it for $9,000. So would you pay $9,000 to get something worth $10,823? Indeed, you would. And the arbitrage value that would come your way then is the 1823. The difference between the value at risk-free rate and the price that's offered. So next, we're considering a risk-free investment, costs 7,000 and pays 8,500. You can either pay all cash or you can borrow half and pay cash for the other. If you borrow 3,500, you're gonna to have to pay back the principal plus 2.12% in year at the end of year one. So again, the risk-free rate here is this 2.12%. 
So what is the net present value of the project? The net present value is the $8,500 divided by the uh, discount rate here of 6% minus 7,000, right? That gives us 1323. If you borrowed, again, you'd have to pay back this $3,500 at with this interest rate growth. So that's 3574. So this is what you would get in the end year. You would get the Again, here's our value, $1,323.54. If you borrowed the money, $8,500 is what you would receive from the project. $3,574 is what you'd have to pay back. Again, at the net present value or at the discount rate of 2.12%. Now you subtract the value of what you paid. And in fact, you only paid $3,500. That's the cash you paid. That again gives us the exact identical net present value. So what this example shows us is it really doesn't matter how you finance the project. However you finance the project in a perfect market, however you finance that, the net present value of the project is the same. So it doesn't financing doesn't matter. This is what we refer to as the separation theorem. That is, you find good projects, and then you figure out how you're going to finance it. Because the financing does not affect the value that you earn. So next we have another problem. We have Forest Holdings is a publicly traded company. It has three assets. It owns 60% of Bubba Gump Shrimp Shipping, 37% of Box of Chocolates, Inc., and 100% of the Easy Running Tennis Shoe Company. The Easy Running Tennis Shoe Company is a sole proprietorship owned by Forest Holdings. So the total market value of Forest is $590 million. The total market value of Bubba Gump Shrimp is $500 million, and Box of Chocolates is $150. So what is the value, what is the market value of the easy running tennis shoe company. So again, if you look down here, Forest is a public company, 60% stake in Bubba Gump, has a value of 300 million. The 70% stake in Box of Chocolates is 55.5 million. So if the total company is worth 590 million, and you subtract out the value of the pieces that we know about, that leaves us with 234.5 million, and that is the market value of the easy running tennis shoe company. Okay, the idea here is what's referred to as the valuation principle. The value of the company is the sum of the values of the component parts. So that's the problems that you could face uh, from chapter three.